Today, I'm going to recap a Korean action horror movie released in 2018, called, Rampant. After being away for years, an exiled prince is back in his homeland kingdom. But unknown to him, his kingdom is under an imminent threat. What will happen to him and his kingdom? Let's find out together. The story takes place in the Choson dynasty era in Korea. A Korean soldier meets with a Dutch trader to secure arms. He sees a crew locked up in a cage on the ship with red eyes while snarling and demanding raw meat. After checking the merchandise, the soldier returns to his superior with a sample rifle. It turns out that they are a rebel group trying to scheme an uprising. But unfortunately for them, War Minister Kim and his men find out and arrest them. Back at the royal court, the ministers report this matter to the current king of Choson, King Jo. He becomes furious and orders them to torture and interrogate the rebel to find out their leader. The king oversees the process himself, but the rebels shut their mouths. Meanwhile, the crown prince Young hears about the arrested rebel. He writes a letter and gives it to his man, then tells him to deliver it to his brother. The crown prince proceeds to the royal court, where the rebels are being tortured. He begs the king to release the rebel, but War Minister Kim has gathered evidence that the rebels have armed themselves with guns. The current king is kowtowing mightily to the Chinese Qing emperor after their invasion, making the rebels desire to remove the vile Qing army and rebuild Chosun. The crown prince also has said this multiple times to the king. But he only listens to the eunuchs instead of the populace. Hearing his son nonsense, the king becomes furious. The king insists that any decision is up to him, whether to submit to the Qing emperor or not. Whether the kingdom prospers or flounders is also his decision. Seeing his father can't be persuaded, Crown Prince Young reveals the mastermind behind the uprising. It is him, the Crown Prince. In exchange for his men's life, he kills himself in front of the king. Hoping that it will open his eyes. Some time has passed, and the exiled Prince Kang Lim has finally returned to Choson after years of living his lavish life in China. He is accompanied by his goofy sidekick, Hugsu. His sudden return was due to the last will he received from his befallen brother, the Crown Prince. He knows that his brother has committed suicide but still doesn't know about the reason and uprising stuff. No one comes to greet him on his arrival, so he wanders the port village of Jamulpo with Hugsu. But something feels off, the village is too quiet. As they walk further, they find the village is in a mess. Piles of dead bodies are burned around the village. What could be the cause? A plague? Or a war? Meanwhile, the king just gets the news of Kang Lim's arrival. It certainly doesn't make him happy. At night, he winds to the royal concubine. He feels that the whole world is conspiring against him. His own son was scheming against him, and now his other ungrateful son comes back only when he hears the death of the crown prince. The concubine then tells him the rumor that the crown princess might also be conspiring against him, fueling his trust issues further. The king immediately orders the guard to seal the crown princess inside her quarter, starving her even though she is pregnant with the crown prince child. It turns out that the concubine is scheming something with the war minister Kim. What are they planning behind the king? Back at the port village, Prince Kang Lim is still stranded there. Hugsu encounters something strange while looking for food inside the village hut. He runs outside and finds a group of soldiers coming to escort them to the royal palace. But it turns out they are a band of assassins hired to kill Kang Lim. As they fight, something unexpected happens. The noise of their fight attracts the missing villager. But something is wrong with them. Yep, it's a zombie apocalypse in a dynastic era. The zombies wipe out the entire assassin group. When Kang Lim and Hugsu get cornered, a band of survivors suddenly show up and help them. They are led by Park, a former servant of the late Crown Prince. They brought Kang Lim to the survivor camp, where they struggled to survive. They beg him to help them, but Kang Lim seems uninterested in helping them. Meanwhile, one of the assassins survives and goes back to his master. The one who ordered to kill Kang Lim is none other than War Minister Kim. The assassin is sure that Kang Lim is already dead in the middle of the chaos, which is not true. The zombie has bitten the assassin, so Kim locks him in the basement. Later, Kim deceived the concubine into coming there. The infected assassin attacks her. But why would Kim do that? We will know soon. 
On the next day, instead of helping the survivor, Prince Kangling tries to hit on Ducky, the female archer. She's a beauty among the hopeless villagers. But she doesn't like the man-child prince who abandoned his land. For real though, why does he even come back to Chorsorn? Back at the royal palace, the king is having breakfast with his concubines. The concubine deceived by war minister Kim survived, but she has been infected. She turns into a full zombie in front of the king and attacks him. The king doesn't know what is happening as the war minister Kim conceals the zombie plague from him. The guard manages to eliminate her, but it's too late. The king has been bitten. Prince Kanlin continues his journey to the palace. Park and Ducky beg him to bring back an army to help the villagers. At first, Prince Kanlin doesn't want to be troubled by his kingdom affair. He just wants in and out as soon as his business is done. But he ended up promising to them after Ducky convinced him. They escort him to the palace, but they are stopped in the outskirts of Jamulpo because they have locked the area down. No one can enter and leave without permission. So Prince Kanlin continues the journey with Hugsu. Leaving Park and the other there. But before leaving, Park tells him the truth behind his brother's suicide. He tells Kanlin to be wary of War Minister Kim. Once he reaches the palace, he goes straight to his dad. He tells them the situation at Jamalpo, but it seems like the king doesn't know about the chaos caused by the plague. As Kanlin tries to explain further, the ministers try to deny it all as a rumor. He now understands what his brother tried to do. The corrupt ministers are manipulating the king under the leadership of the war minister Kim. The king is afraid that Kang Lim has come to take the throne too, but Kang Lim assures him that he is not interested in taking the throne. It turns out the only reason he came back is to fulfill the crown prince's final wish that he sent to him in a letter. The king's heart is clouded, and his court is polluted. Please take my wife and unborn child to China says the letter that he received from his brother. The foolish king is slightly offended but grants Kang Lim an army as he requested to aid Jamalpo anyway, as long as he stays away from the throne. Prince Kang Lim then goes to the locked pregnant crown princess. He asks her to go back to China with him, but she refuses. She can't leave while Chosun is in dire condition. Furthermore, justice has not been served. But after Kang Lim shows her husband's final wish, she finally agrees. Kang Lim promises to avenge his brother's death. Suddenly, Hugsu comes to bring a piece of bad news. Park and his entourage have been arrested. It turns out War Minister Kim is still hunting remnants of the rebels. Just as they speak, the devil himself comes. War Minister Kim and other ministers come to tell Kang Lim that the king has retracted the military order. They have a heated argument for a moment. They also force the crown princess to stay for tonight's event, where an envoy from Qing will visit Chosun. Now, Kang Lin doesn't have an army, and the crown princess is being held. To his surprise, they also tell him that the king might be infected too. The envoy from Qing has arrived, and the palace hosts a party to welcome them. But some unwelcome guests have joined the party. The zombies suddenly appear and attack attendees and workers around the palace, but it hasn't reached the main area yet. As the party continues, the king's transformation begins until he finally becomes a full zombie and attacks a dancer. War Minister Kim kills the zombified king. It turns out that it all was the power-hungry Kim's plan. He deliberately spread the plague after finding it out to eliminate the royal blood and stage a coup. The palace is full of zombies now and falls into chaos. Prince Kang Lim finds Park and convinces the royal guard to let him go. He then explains the situation and leads them to handle the situation. Kang Lim, Park, and Hug Su rush to the jail while the royal guards defend the palace wall to prevent the zombie from getting outside. They free Duck He and the others from the jail but quickly become surrounded by zombies. They can barely escape the hordes from the isolated jail by cracking open a window. They join the royal guards, who manage to hold back the zombies until the sun rises. Once the morning comes, the zombies run into hiding to avoid the sunlight that can instantly kill them. Meanwhile, the war minister Kim is hiding with the other ministers. Now that the king is dead, Kim uses the momentum to spark a revolution. Of course, he will be the new leader. One of the ministers disagrees, so he kills him right away. They plan to hunt down Prince Kang Lim and the Crown Princess when the sun rises. 
but it turns out that one of their soldiers is infected and attacks one of the ministers. Kim handles them then checks if anyone else got bitten too. Unfortunately, it turns out that Kim is the one who got bitten while handling the infected soldier earlier. The ministers panic as they try to kill each other. Kim slays them all, leaving him alone, slowly turning into a zombie. Ironically, his own plan is biting back. He amputates his own hand then wanders around the throne room. The power mad Kim has gone insane. Kang Lim and the others need to find a way to handle the zombies before the sun sets. He plans to go back immediately to China, but the others convince him to fulfill his duty as the Prince of Chosun. Now he feels duty-bound to find a solution. So he orders one of the guards to call for reinforcement troops while the other sets up the royal villa to trap the zombies. They will use a drum to attract them into going inside the villa. Then once the zombies are trapped, they will burn the whole building. Unfortunately, Hugsu got killed by the zombie Kim while setting it up. They got ambushed and couldn't help him. The show must go on. Now that the sun is starting to come down, the zombies start to move again. They barely manage to fend them off and go inside the villa, but they lose a few comrades in the process. Park got bitten by the zombie. So he decides to stay and hit the drum, then set the building on fire while the other goes away to safety. After hitting the drum, he is about to set the zombie-infested building on fire. At the edge of his transformation into a zombie, Kim shows up and puts down the fire. Kang Lim stares from afar and realizes that something is not right, so he goes back to the building. After he gets inside, he struggles to set up the fire. Ducky helps him by firing a fire arrow at the building. Finally, Kang Lim manages to set the building on fire and escape through the roof. But guess who is waiting for him on the roof? Yep, the zombie Kim is ready to fight him there for the mandatory final boss fight every film has. After some epic maneuvers and a bunch of unlogical luck, Kang Lim manages to beat Kim and casts him down to the burning villa. Not long after that, the reinforcement troop comes. Not only reinforcement troops, but ordinary citizens also come to help. As Kang Lim sees them, it reminds them of the duty his royal blood brings to lead his people to prosperity. After that, he continues to liberate the surrounding village in his kingdom from the zombie invasion. What is a king without his people, and where does a kingdom go without its leader? What do you think about the story? When the undead meet politics, what can they do better? Let us know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching, and as always, see you next time.